Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. It is Wednesday, the 18th of August, and with it being Wednesday and the game just a couple of days away now, it's time for another opposition preview. And this time we've got Mike from the Blue Boys Network, an Everton fan, a great YouTube channel. They are so close to 10,000 subscribers as well. He's going to ask you at the end of the video. I'm going to ask you right now, if you subscribe to this channel, please jump over to the Blue Boys Network. He even said, even if you don't watch it, just hit subscribe so that you can get closer to that 10K subs. And the link is in the description. But the next person you're going to hear from is, of course, Mike from the Blue Boys Network to give us the lowdown on everything the Toffees. And this is the moment when I take a stand of God. Good morning, everyone. And Joe, thanks for having me on the channel. Really do appreciate it. The channel's smashing it. You're absolutely flying. So thanks for having me on for the Leeds v Everton preview. Uh, first question uh, that you sent over was thoughts on our, our summer and Rafa Benitez and it's a tough one for Everton really, you know, we've gone from having Carlo Ancelotti and probably the guarantee that Everton would break financial fair play to Ancelotti walking out, going to Real Madrid. Um, a lot of fans took that really negatively and, and us spending at the moment £1.6 million on three players but what was really refreshing was the, the difference in the two teams, certainly the team that ended the last game of the season 5-0 against Manchester City and the team that started this season with a 3-1 win at Southampton looked like chalk and cheese. So uh, it is a positive, just about. What are my hopes for this season? Again, it's a difficult one because I think I think my hopes for last season was for Everton to qualify for Europe and, and certainly push the top four, six. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't do that. Um, I think a lot of teams have progressed. I think Leeds have progressed significantly. And bearing in mind they finished ninth last season, um, I think they'll have a good season. Um, Arsenal are spending or at least trying to recruit they didn't look great the other night however Aston Villa have recruited as well so look if Everton can finish I would say for this season around the top eight I think that's a good season for Everton knowing that next season we may be able to invest just a little bit more money and, and maybe bring in a couple more bigger name players better players that can really push us on to the next level fingers crossed um, tactic, tactically, what we can expect from Everton is a is a very organised side. We looked a little bit all over the place first half against Southampton, but I, I genuinely do think that was due to some of the COVID isolations that we've had in the team. Players like uh, Ben Godfrey, for example, at the back, which have really cost us. Um, so I think you're going to come up against a very solid um resilient side a side that has got pace down the wings that will look for the the overlaps that you make to target those spaces you know the the gaps that say ailing or Lee, for example i think very much you'll see damari gray pretty much standing in that space um i think you'll play i think we'll play a 442 um which will allow our wingers to you know counter attack quickly Richarlison will carry the ball well for us. Um, so will Calvert-Lewin, both getting goals in the last game. And I think you'll see Decore carrying the ball from defence to attack, being a ball carrier that we wanted to wanted him to be when we signed him. So, yeah, I think I think Everton tactically will be a very solid side to break down. Not as fluid as Manchester United or yourselves, I don't think. A very different style of football. But we will be difficult to break down, I suspect. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just mentioned names in terms of danger men, and you know Everton. Everton have got a few, not not you know blowing smoke up all our backsides, but last season we didn't necessarily see their attacking qualities as much as we'd like. Um, Ancelotti played a very defensive style, whereas you know we know Decore is big and strong in the middle of the park, and he scored a good goal against Southampton. Richarlison's back; he had a really good Olympics. He's scored a goal. He will want to continue more. DCL will want to prove a point. 
because he didn't get enough games in the England team, in my opinion, in the Euros. So I certainly think they're your danger men, your three danger men there. Um, a lot of Leeds fans will be talking about James Rodriguez. It's unlikely James will be at the, at the club. Um, certainly not. Certainly not playing on Saturday, but whether he's still even an Everton club player, I'd be surprised. So you can't put him in there. Um, and then I think, of course, you've got Luca Dean, who makes it overlap and crosses. You've got Tamari Gray and Townsend, who you know don't don't stand out as massive players or good signings even, but they're prepared to get the ball in the box. And when you've got Calvert Lewin and Richarlison, who can both head a ball, that's that's a positive. <laughs> I think, like last season, we played very defensive and it sort of hit you on the counter a couple of times and we, we managed to win at Elland Road. This is a different game because I think this is your first home game you've had really um, full capacity at the very least since you've been back in the Premier League, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not getting my seasons mixed up. Um, so this game is incredibly difficult for Everton because your fans you know, will support your team through the thick and the thin. We've seen it in League One Championship Premier League. You know, you are a very positive, buoyant club and, and huge respect to Leeds for that. Um, I think it's it's a tough game for that reason, full fans. Um, I think Everton, Everton will set up to win. We'll probably set up more defensive. We might even have to play a five in midfield to counter just uh, the raw, the pace and, and the, the cleverness that your one-touch passing creates. Because even against Manchester United, we saw one-touch passing. We saw creative play. Um, it was just Manchester United really stepped up. So it's going to be a difficult game. But I think Everton just have to be solid, hit you on the counter, use the gaps in behind your full-backs when they push forward, get the ball in the box and hope Calvert-Lewin scores from headers. Who would I take from Leeds? It's it's a tough question because there's a lot of good players at Leeds. It's just whether they fit in the Everton side and the way we play. Because I think Leeds is a very specific mould. And I think what, what Bielsa has done for Leeds is he goes and finds specific players that fit in his style of play and his ideology. And that's brilliant. Two players that stand out, I think, is Rafinha. I think that's blatantly obvious. The guy is a, a goal contribution machine, if you want to call them that. You know, he can score goals, he can set up, he's got pace, he can beat a man. He's just a phenomenal footballer. And I really like Ailing. I don't think he gets anywhere near the credit the kid deserves. I think he's very capable of beating a man. He's very capable of defending. He can put a ball in the box. He can shoot. I really like I really like Aileen and and he's a player that I'd consider and and obviously Jack Harrison I know you've recently signed him for Manchester City but this is a guy that was the second highest in goal contributions if I'm not mistaken last season and again he's just got something a little bit different to him you know you don't quite know whether he's going on his left or his right so he's a player that I rate highly um, so probably those three stand out for me. Um, I obviously would include Patrick Bamford, but I think Everton are covered with Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin. But, you know, if you're throwing him in, we'll have him for free, no worries. Uh, score prediction, as I say, I think this is a difficult game. Um, I think I think both teams can win for different reasons. I think Leeds would certainly be favourites because they're at home as well. And they've got the crowd behind them. Um I think 1-1, one, one, um, and I might even be up being optimistic there, but I think 1-1. One, one, a lot of Everton fans are confident they can go to Leeds and get a result and, and, and win the game. If you pass as quickly as you did against Manchester United, even, even at times when you didn't necessarily look as organised as I've seen in the past, um, I still think you'll outpass Everton. And it's just when we have the ball, how effective are we going to be with it? Um, and that's going to be the big key question here. If we're effective with the ball, we can win. If we're not, we could get hammered. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. So I'm, I'm going with a 1-1. One, one. Uh, my heart's saying 2-1 Everton, my head's saying 1-1. One, one. But look, I can under, understand you guys going, we're going to win 3-0. I can understand. So yeah, 
Joe, thank you for having me on as always, mate. I really do appreciate it. It's absolutely fantastic. Your channel's flying. A big shout out to your subscribers as well. I'm 200 short from 10,000, so if you can help us out, I'd massively appreciate it, guys. You know, don't have to watch the content. Just help me get to that magic number. Really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, good game on the weekend, guys. Peace. That was Mike from the Blue Boys Network. Again, make sure you subscribe to their channel. The link is in the description. Top, top guy. Just want to pick out on, you know, a few things, as always, um, that he touched on there. It is mad, I find, that how quick it can change in football when you have a poor window or you have to trim the purse strings accordingly. Um, you know, if you think back to last summer with Everton, they had the signing of James Rodriguez, Alan, and now they're signing Damari Gray and Andros Townsend, you know, and there was talk of you know, top four, top six, and now it's top eight. And I think we're in a very similar boat with our aspirations because at the end of last season, we were all talking about top six and the lack of, of, of movement in the window as it stands, still no Lewis O'Brien in the door, still no further on from just junior Furpo. Um, and I think for me, just based looking at the current market, the squads in the Premier League, top 10 for us this season would be massive just based on, on this window alone. Um so it is mad how quick things can change in the Premier League if you do stand still. Uh, in terms of when he touched on what, what kind of team uh, we're going to go up against under this new look Benitez team, they are going to be very tough to break down, that's for sure. Um, we need to be wary of the wingers and deliveries into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, you know, I think match of the day it was, we're just saying um, after their, their result at the weekend, they got 17 crosses into the box, whereas last season... They averaged about 14, um, you know, over the course of the season uh, per game. And, and just in his first game, they got 17 crosses alone. So it's so clear that they're going to play to Dominic Calvert-Lewin's strengths. And he touched on, you know, Richarlison being great in the air as well. So um, it's it's one area that, that's definitely going to be peppered. We're going to be peppered from up on high. And they've got some great deliverers into the box. How, you know, Lucas Digne, for example. Um, so we need to make sure we're on it for that. Um, you know, he, he mentioned that he doesn't believe James Rodriguez will play, um, let alone be an Everton player, which is interesting. I wonder where he'll end up. Um, and, and, and in terms of the, the star men, I've already just mentioned them, but it's going to be Dominic Calvert-Loon. It's going to be Richarlison. And of course, deliveries from the, from the left fullback, uh, Luca Dean, we need to be wary of. I think he, he made a great point in terms of home fans. Um, I believe Ellen Road is going to be such a fortress for us this season. Um, it'll be interesting if Everton score first what that would do to the Ellen Road crowd. Uh, I do think tomorrow's, uh, Saturday's game, sorry, should I say, it'll be hard for them to keep, even if we were to go two behind early doors, I still think because it's been so long that we've tasted Premier League football as a full fan base, not just like the West Brom game, it's going to be some atmosphere. I think it could be on a par with that with that Derby semi-final. It's a shame it's not under the lights, but it's going to be bouncing at Ellen Road. And any team coming to Ellen Road is going to find it tough. Um, and just in terms of like when he picked out uh, who he felt was, you know, he would take. And I love that, you know, I felt that every single person I asked this question will go Rafinha and KP. Wasn't that case for Mike? It was Ailing. And I love that. And he also mentioned Pat. Uh, and it's great to see the rest of our squad now getting the respect they deserve across the the other fans within the division. Because, you know, how many times have we had to feel that we have to defend certain individuals? But it's nice that they're now being able to see their worth as well. And to think the money that we played for some of these players and they would take them in their side. I mean, what, how much was Luke in 200k from Bristol City? It's a madness. It is a madness. Um, but that was Mike from the Blue Boys Network. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoy doing these. And it gives you a real snapshot of what we're looking uh, to go up against, of course, whenever we do play uh, a team. So thank you very much to Mike from the Blue Boys Network. Make sure you smash a subscribe on their channel. The link is in the description. Let's see if Leeds can get him to 10k. We normally take more, so why not do that for him as well? But thank you, as always, for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of The Daily Leads. And then um, we'll be looking ahead with a preview. I'll have a guest on and we will have a bit of a preview ahead of Everton. And then it'll be match day. And with me being at Ellen Road on Saturday, I will be doing a match day experience vlog as well. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, get your comments in, and, of course, hit that notification bell because we'll be doing Super Sunday again this week and really enjoy doing that. Um, thank you as always for watching. I'll leave it there because I'm rambling now. Peace out. Leeds, leeds, leeds.